I present to you from the Camden Partnership um, about the work at the Brandon Centre. Um, really, Claire should be presenting because she's the person who's the service user involved with me, but I'm kind of doing it for her. So, um, here we go. Um, I was asked to present on what we uh, are sending a strong service user voice. I'll just give you a bit of an overview of the Brandon Centre because it's a non statutory service partnership with Camden Cams. Um, so, we offer young people contraceptive and sexual health service, about 1,300 young people passing through that service a year. Um, psychotherapy and counselling, about 280 people going through, uh, multi-systemic therapy and parenting programmes for parents and teens. So, I'll be quick, so I'm just going to give you a quick overview. We've always collected feedback from young people, always use the chai or you know, other feedback. But I guess that um, it wasn't quite eye out for you, and it was just feedback. And I don't think we were responding to it particularly well in terms of it changing the service. So the first thing we needed to do was to change it within the organisation. And I wanted to lead the service user involvement. It was, in fact, our uh, referrals coordinator, because she's the person who's got about 40% self-referral. Um, so she's the person who speaks to the young person when they call up, or even if they're referred by a GP, she gets their contact number, calls them, finds out when they want to come in, even appointment, day, when they can make it, how long they have to wait. So she really had a very good relationship with young people, and she's the person who would be phoning them up afterwards to find out their views of the service. Um, and she was very keen to do this, so we supported her role with more time and training, and created a slot in team meetings to discuss service user involvement. And importantly, I'll talk about it a bit more, closing the feedback loop. Wanted to make it more interactive, creative, fun, and essentially more influential on the service, but not involving much money or technology or other stuff that makes it difficult. Um, so I just wanted to give you an example of a couple of things we've done. I realised that um, in all the presentations so far, people have talked about services user involvement. It's been the most fun part, I think. And lots of people have done very interesting things with videos and getting it involved. as well. So I don't think this is unique. So I'm just going to give you a snapshot of what we've done in the last six months or so. So the first thing was to do a feedback fate. And this came from the ideas of, of the front office staff, actually. We're a creative bunch. And um, from that, we're also setting up a service user participation group. So the feedback fate, I came in one day and the front of the staff, because they do spend a lot of time with the young people because they're involved in the sexual health side as well, so they'll be giving out condoms and they're just much more interactive with the young people than perhaps in regular mental health services. So they were in there cutting up things and creating and they put us about 10 days in the summer for one of our, the largest room there to be, um, to be made into a feedback room. And in that time, 77 young people were participating. So they were coming in either for their sexual health or psychotherapy, um, and they come in either them a bit early, they go in before their appointment or afterwards to give feedback. We had 29 guys and 48 girls come through in that time. Um, it was incentivized with a prize draw, um, 50 quid for any voucher for anywhere they wanted. And actually, the person who won it was named in three times. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, we'll work that out again. Um, but the thing about the prize draw is that they put their names down and their contact details, and they ticked the box that they could be contacted to be involved in further service user involvement. And that's what helped us get people involved in the service user group. Um, this is an example of the room. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it was the summer, it was bright. Um, they made it fun, there was food there, music. And there were no clinicians involved, so it was the front office staff who would take the young person up there and there would be a group of young people, go up to school, there's often lots of boys and girls around in the place, and they would go in there and give their feedback. And there was different ways of doing it. So there were sticky walls, graffiti walls, um, there were games in there, there was uh, suggestions boxes, and there were being staff to talk to. Um, and there was a drop box, and this was... Um, Based on the feedback we'd had from them in the past, they were asked, you know, here's the feedback you gave us, please drop it open in the box, let the brand search for a better service. Um, and one was about um, drop-in sessions for sexual health and counselling, because that, that was available for sexual health but not for therapy. Uh, one was uh, group sessions, and one was open at weekends, and that was right at the beginning, so there's not many coins in there. Um, so we did that, and we collected loads and loads of information. At the same time, well, Soon afterwards, we quickly contacted the young people who said they wanted to be involved and set up um, focus groups. 
And this is the Young People's Consultation Groups that are now still running. It's hard to keep it going, but that's where we're at. So these were young people only who use the psychotherapy service. So that's what you're interested in. Um, because groups for the sexual health side don't work so well. <coughs> they don't want me anymore. Um, so this was for the psychotherapy service. Um, and it was often either while they were still, usually it's when they'd finished their therapy, although for some therapists they it would be okay. The therapist was always asked what they thought. Um, usually it was soon as they finished and completed the chai. Um, so the people running it were Claire, who's non-clinical staff, and an ex-service user who's actually on our management committee, so went straight back up to the top, as it were. Um, and they facilitated it, but it was really led by the young people, and it was confidential, informal, and incentivized with vouchers and food. Um, there's challenges around recruitment and retention, um, availability, and actually age, because so far they're all over 16 in those groups. You might have to know one for those younger. Um, I'm not going to go through, really, people would get a lot out of it from being involved, and I guess you will have these talks with people doing services for involvement, but it's quite opportunity, empowering, give something back. But interesting, when you look at this list, I think my front office staff would have the same responses from being involved in it, actually, in terms of their involvement in the organisation. It was quite apparent for them, too. Um, what would you do with the feedback? Get all this feedback and then what you do with it. And this is what I mean by the loop. Fortunately, I have great training clinical psychologist on placement, always an asset. Um, and she uh, collected all the information, did a qualitative um, and quantitative analysis, thematic analysis, wrote a report, it was fed back to all the staff, to the management committee, and we talked about how feeding it back to the young people so that we could close the loop and respond. And this is what they did, I can't remember staff. They, um, we have a wall in the waiting room where their comments are about, I don't know if you can read it, but it's, um, this is the stuff they told us, some of the things, um, and what they wanted done. Waiting room's a bit gloomy, doesn't put me off. Um, during my time on the waiting list, it'd be helpful to have someone to speak to. Um, be great when we go open at the weekends. So a lot of information about what they've told us is put up on the wall. Um, but also, this is a kind of changing wall where it says, you know, what we're doing now, what we'd like to do. So there's information we've decorated, and that's often this what we've done with lighting and various things that they've asked for. Um, introduce more counselling appointments at different times later. Um, providing more information about our services, so that's changed. Um, we're offering, about to be offering appointments on Saturdays, which is what they've asked for. And that's to do with the Minding the Gap funding, specifically around the older ones being some more funding coming in. Um, so there's a, you know, different ways of giving feedback, different ways of asking for a new therapist. Sometimes it's very difficult, they don't want to see that person, and we can be very clear how to do that now. Um, so looking ahead, really, um, was really about how do we close the feedback loop you know, always? Because I think when you get all this information and it's not responded to, we just had a conversation and I'll take it now. If people say, yes, they'd like to participate in service user feedback, we ask them with each feedback on the chart, would you like to participate? If they tick yes, then what happens to it? Are they contacted? Are they invited in? Um, and that needs momentum, it needs a bit of time, and it needs some really motivated people. And not always the conditions. I'm not sure that they're always the best place to do it, actually. Um, so how to turn the ideas into reality is, I think, a major issue. And how do we communicate those ideas <coughs> to managers, commissioners, donors, from statutory trustees, a range of people? And how to maintain momentum in a small organisation? And it, it is about having, I think, enthusiastic staff who are praised. <laughs> you know, when, when they put up this wall, the, the clinical staff go and talk to the front office staff and say, oh, that's fantastic what we've done in there. It's really great. It's been quite good for the service as a whole. And if I think if I ask Claire what she'd say about service user involvement, she'd probably say, let's do it. I realise that that's copyright and it's been a video for him.